Today I'm going to show you how to make a bonnet in just a few simple steps. Step one, buy a frozen pizza and put it in some stranger's cart because this wasn't my cart and the store was all out when I got there. There you go. Step two, make some car seat covers. Step three, look through your pattern pieces and hope that you have enough. Step four, realize that you definitely don't and you're gonna have to cut out some more pieces. Step five, eat your frozen pizza and use the box for some sturdy pattern pieces. For step six, you're gonna wanna trace those pattern shapes onto your fabric. Here, you can see I'm using very unconventional methods. Um, it's Jersey and the brush markers work nicely and I've used them without incident. So, sorry if you don't like it. Here's some footage of me struggling with a fabric marker before I gave up. Painful. Also, this fabric will be very oddly shaped if you followed step two correctly. So just make sure that you're being aware of stretch direction and pattern direction. Step seven, cut. And cut. And cut some more until you're done cutting. Step eight, notice it's a beautiful day and take your dog on a walk with you. Step nine, recall your dog so that she doesn't drown. Come on, Busy. Good girl. You're gonna fucking drown out there. I'm gonna save you. <laughs> Come on, Busy. Come here. Come here. Who's that good dog? Come see. Come here. Oh, what a good dog. What a good dog. Come get pets. Oh, you're tired now. Good girl. <laughs> He's a good dog. Step 10, pin and pin and pin. Step 11, open up that package you got yesterday. And step 12, bond with your newfound special delivery. <laughs> Once that's done, you're going to sew all of your pattern pieces together. They should be right sides like you pinned them. Um, and that will be your step 13. Boston. Step 14, terrorize your baby with the retractable measuring tape. <laughs> I like to use shorter pins for this next step, um, just because, I don't know, the little round head makes it easier to find, and I don't need to worry about length so much with these. These are my regular quilting pins, and they're pretty long, uh, so yeah, I like to use the little short silk pins for this. You're going to find the center of both the bonnet hat, stretching it out, laying it flat, and then you'll find the center again um, of the ties, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated because... <laughs> You're going to realize that you have cut the ties to be entirely the wrong length. For steps 18 through 24, you're going to realize when you go to cut your fabric out that your tripod does not bend in the direction that you want. So you're going to do some geometry, warm up the hot glue gun, take some measurements, finish the stupid thing you didn't need in the first place. Realize that you wasted a whole 30 minutes on this because come to find out your stand actually can bend in the direction that you thought it couldn't bend originally. But you know what, you're just gonna tape it on to try and see how it goes. 
doesn't work anyway, totally fruitless, waste of time, do not recommend doing steps 18 through 24. <coughs> Step 25, take a lunch break. You deserve it. Step 26, you're gonna cut out the correct length for the bonnet ties, which is 42 inches and not 21 inches like you did the first time. I like that song you're singing. Step 27, enjoy the thunderstorm. Step 28, pin. Step 29, so. Step 30 is super important. You're going to admire your cozy dog under your sewing desk. Step 31 is more pinning. This time we're going back and pinning it over on top of itself. We're gonna catch it up with a little stitch in the ditch and then you're gonna pin and sew all the way down the length of the ties. Whoop. Step 32 is sew it all the way down to the very end. Tie up the loose ends for step 33. And step 34, bonnet! Congratulations, you made a bonnet. <laughs> I'm trying to.